Jackson's Thriller Album. Stories in the Room. This is Michael Jackson's Thriller Album, Stories in the Room. Join film composer Anthony Marinelli, who programmed synthesizers for seven songs on Thriller, and a and veteran film producer Stephen Ray, who assisted Quincy Jones and was in the studio every day with Quincy and Michael. Michael Jackson's Thriller Album, Stories in the Room. I'm Anthony Marinelli with my longtime close friend and co-host, Stephen Ray, bringing you the real stories directly from the talented people in the room with us during the making of Thriller, the greatest selling album of all time. Let's welcome and share stories with loved recording and mix engineer Matt Forger. His vast resume is highlighted by a long, important relationship with legendary engineer Bruce Houdin and iconic producer Quincy Jones. His wide-ranging album work with Michael began on Thriller, and continued through everything else involving Michael. In this segment, Matt talks about the importance of having a great team that starts with the songwriter and ends with the mastering engineer. We'll also discover a random event one night that led to the creation of the hit single, PYT. Quincy has a unique ability to recognize great ideas that might be hidden to others. Ultimately, the thing that always guides me is the song has to be the best that it can be. And to me, it's that you, you want to fully realize the song's potential. And this is one of the things working with Quincy is I could see how he operated uh, uh, mentally in, in just that very thing. What is the potential of what this song could become and how do we get it to that point and how do all the little parts uh, the interlocking pieces of the puzzle fit together so that when you hear it, it just washes over your body and it just takes you away to another place. You know, emotionally, you're responding to this convergence of, of all of these things, the counterpoint, the rhythm, the uh, harmonics, the, all of those technical things that, you know, each, each be, because that's true of the entire process. If you don't have the best person, or not necessarily the best, but the most appropriate person for each part of that process, then you're not going to end up with that thing at the end that is representative of the, 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 the best uh, possible result. Because it starts with the guy writing the song, and then it's going to go to uh, the musicians and the arrangers and then the producer and then the recording engineer and then the mixing engineer and then the mastering engineer. And then it goes to the plant where you got to have quality control on the product so that when it goes out to the public, uh, you know, the public is, yeah, yeah. okay, I'm, I'm, I'm here and I'm feeling what these guys are doing. Yeah, these, these guys know what they're doing in the studio. Well you're getting that result because of a long chain of a long process. But Quincy was that shepherd, wasn't he? Because he, he shepherded the song. Because it started with picking it, identifying it, and then, like you said, avoiding all, like taking the sheep through all the obstacles that could happen. They yeah. can mess up their foot, or they can't get to water, or there could be a, a wolf. Yeah. All the stuff along the way. Well, believing in that, what he had. Yeah. And why you pick certain players to play on. Why this drummer and not that drummer? Why this guitar player? Right. And then the idea of, I always remember that he would take he had to take the, every now and then he would take that helicopter view mm -hmm. of the album. Yeah. So what was missing emotionally, tempo wise, harmonically. And one of the things that was missing at a certain point was the party song, like a real party yeah. song and PYT, how that happened. Yeah. We were coming home one night yeah. and these two young girls next door, next to us at 1230 at night, in a Ferrari, and they were they were very attractive, <laughs> and he looked over and said, "Whoa, there's some pretty young girls there, some pretty young things," and he went, "Whoa, PYT, that's a oh, great idea." Okay, so and, so it was Qu 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 Quincy that came up with the hook. Yeah, I, I never knew that. So we're we're there, that's and a great story. I, we're there, and I'm 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 dri obviously I'm driving, I'm looking, and I said, "Ooh, look at them PYT." You know, I said something like that, and he said, "Yeah, there's some pretty young things." And I was like, whoa, yeah. And they were really, really attractive. And they pulled away in a Ferrari. And then we got to the next light. At, we were at Cannon. Then we went to Beverly. 
and we rolled the window down and, and uh, one of the girls looked at him and said, hey, hey, I know, are you famous? And he was like, nah, baby, you know, we're just on our way home. And he said, where y'all going? And he was like, oh, we're going to a party up in Bel Air. And he was like, okay, y'all have fun. And they sped off, right? And as we drive away, he said, man, I know just the cat that write this song. And he, we got to the house and he called James Ingram at like 1.30 in the morning. I remember that. And a couple of days later, James Ingram came in with the... I was programming this Lindrum in the hallway with him because we didn't have a studio. <laughs> and Quincy said, go down there, find a place down there. We were on top of some Anvil cases yep. down at the end. That thing came in. So it's just what you said though, sometimes the songs are painful, you know, there's no formula on that. And then this one just, I guess, flew out, right? Yeah, because he knew, because the helicopter view again of him understanding like, okay, we have this, we have this, we have this, we have this, we have this. And of course, later, you know, both him and Michael realized their whole goal was, God, could we sell double of what we did on Off the Wall? Because if you have two records per household, that was the goal. They started talking about that. Like, if you're the kid, you don't want to share the record with the parent. Yeah. Because there's something for everyone in the family on the record. So you've got human nature, you've got lady in my life, you know, for the, for the older, for the parents, and then you've got PYT for the younger party kids, and you've got want to be starting something, and you got, you know, there's a balance, but he always would have that helicopter view of what was needed. Well, it's like looking over the neighborhood. The, well, we need more trees over there. We need more, you know. Well, that was the, the era of the album where it was the producer's responsibility to put together the songs and, and the, that combination of setting, setting that mood of how they combined and flowed. Right. In fact, I remember the day, talking about two records per household, I remember the day, and this was after Thriller, it must have been James, because we did that album next, Quincy uh, walked into the control room and Bruce and I were sitting there and he goes, guys, you won't believe this. He said, Thriller has gone platinum in L.A. <laughs> and Bruce and I just sat there. Platinum in Los Angeles. I have never heard that phrase before. <laughs> that a record went platinum. In one town. In one city. One in city. Los Angeles. Yeah. He said, he goes, they're, 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 they're buying a copy and they're wearing it out and they're going back to the store to buy their second copy. And I'm thinking, platinum in LA, that's just like, it, that's one of those things like, you know, you can't comprehend numbers that get too big. I couldn't, it was like, I was like, you know, we just sat there and kind of, we were all in like the stunned state for about a minute. It like, wow, that's just like, nobody's ever, I've never heard of anybody doing anything. Well, it had all the right songs on there. Well, it, it did, it, it, and, they all, and it flowed. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was Quincy that, that pulled it together. I heard a comment, uh, you know, there was always, there, there's always a few naysayers or always, there's always somebody that, that uh, wants to downplay something. There's always, there's always someone in the world that wants to rain on your parade. You, 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 more so now, but even then. And somebody came along and it was, uh, uh, somebody said, well, you know, I could have made Thriller if I had those songs. And I'm thinking to myself, you just demonstrated your lack of knowledge because Quincy was the producer who pulled those songs together. And there wasn't another producer in the world that would have pulled those songs together except Quincy. So it's kind of like <laughs> you're, miss you're missing the point. You're missing the whole point. You're missing the point here. Only, only Quincy would, would have done it that way. Join us for the next episode of Michael Jackson's Thriller album, Stories in the Room, with your hosts, Anthony Marinelli and Stephen Ray. Watch our extended interviews on youtube.com forward slash at stories in the room. Audio only interviews are available on all podcast networks. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at stories in the room. For the latest news and links, visit the website storiesintheroom.com. 
This podcast is produced by Christian D. Brune and David Wolf. Recorded by Autovita Studios. Additional recording by Ben Rackless. Edited by Jay Spang and Sean Hedinger. Music by Anthony Marinelli and Stephen Ray. Michael Jackson's doing right.